Diagnostic Imaging and Health Through Awareness webinar. My name is Leisha Getson, and I will be your host. Before we begin, just a little housekeeping. The presentation this evening will last about 50 to 60 minutes, followed by Q&A. You should be able to hear me as well as the speaker as, and follow along with the PowerPoint presentation that's on the screen. To the right of your screen, you'll see a little chat box. If you have a question, just type it in and submit it, and we'll get to as many questions as possible at the end of the presentation. If you don't get to, if we don't get to your question, you can uh, forward it to me in an email at tdi at comcast.net, and I'll, uh, with, with our speaker's permission, forward it to her to get you an answer. If for some reason you get cut off during the webinar, you may be able to log back in and fast forward to catch up. But uh, if not, don't worry. This uh, presentation will be archived on our website within a day or two, and the PowerPoint will also be available. Okay, so I'm very excited to introduce our present, uh, presenter this evening. Uh, I had the pleasure of uh, meeting her and, and hearing about the work that she's doing in the world, and I just thought it was um, fascinating, something I had never heard of. And I was very happy when she uh, decided to um, become one of our presenters. So our speaker this evening is Deb Freeman, an ECASKU University Certified Postural Alignment Specialist. Tonight she'll be discussing eliminating chronic, chronic and recurrent pain with posture therapy. Posture therapy is a non-medical modality which utilizes a series of gentle, individualized exercises and stretches to target the underlying root cause of pain. Uh, our speaker, Deb, received her Posture Alignment Specialist Certification in 2013, at which time she began assisting others in their journey to eliminate chronic pain. In 2014, she obtained her Posture Alignment Specialist II certification. Um, and so Deb also facilitates weekly postural alignment classes, I believe in Cherry Hill, but I'm sure we'll get some information about that. And she also does one-on-one -on -one sessions. So Deb, welcome. We're so happy to have you with us this evening. Thank you, Leisha. It's great to be here. I'm very excited and grateful to share with you today uh, how you can begin to eliminate your chronic and recurrent musculoskeletal pain and get back to living a pain-free lifestyle. So today, uh, we're going to start with Pete Igoscu's story, the founder of the Igoscu Method of Posture Therapy. And then next, I'll share a bit about my story and how I came to be certified through Igoscu University as a posture alignment specialist. We'll discuss what posture therapy is and talk about what your pains and physical limitations are trying to tell you. We'll have a look at some before and after photos of people just like you that are enjoying the benefits of posture therapy. We'll also spend some time experiencing a few of the balancing exercises, we call them E-sizes, and seeing how they affect your body. And lastly, we'll discuss where to go from here to begin your journey to a pain-free lifestyle. Sounds great. <laughs> All right. so. P. Igoscu was wounded while serving in Vietnam. He developed hip pain as a result of the injury, but after his rehabilitation, the hip pain persisted. He was told by his doctors that the pain was all in his head. Hmm. But he didn't buy it. He noticed that one of his feet was turned out, and he recalled that that wasn't the case prior to the injury. So he decided to take a look at an anatomy book, and what he saw was that the human body was designed in such a way that the feet are supposed to be pointed straight ahead and parallel to one another. So he thought if he could get his foot pointed straight ahead again, maybe his hip pain would go away. He began working with his body, doing stretches and exercises, and it turns out he was right. His, once his foot was again pointed straight ahead, his hip pain went away. He realized that the pain was simply a symptom of his postural misalignment and that his turned out foot was a sign that he was posturally out of balance. Once his balance was restored, he was pain free. From there, he changed careers and ultimately went on to develop the Agoscu method of posture therapy. His efforts have since helped thousands to eliminate their chronic and recurrent pains, often when all else failed. Wow, that's pretty impressive. 
Yeah. So I'm here today with you because of my own chronic pain of several years. And um, ever since I was a teen who preferred good books over sports, I've had a less than ideal posture. As an adult, I had a career that required a lot of sitting and computer work. And yet I had no pain of any significance until I was in a car accident that left me with herniated and bulging discs in my neck. Mm. So I began treatment for my pain with chiropractic care and physical therapy. And the chiropractic care seemed to be somewhat helpful, at least temporarily, but my body wouldn't hold the adjustments. And unfortunately, physical therapy had me doing exercises that worked directly on the side of the pain, leaving me with even more pain and inflammation than I had before the therapy. I was then sent to pain management, and as you can see from the list here, mm -hmm. I tried many modalities. Some temporarily alleviated my pain, but none of them really got to the root of the problem that was creating so much pain. So over the years, the pain spread from my neck, shoulders, and upper back to my whole body, mm -hmm. to the point that one of my doctors mentioned fibromyalgia. Well, I was unwilling to accept that diagnosis and pain management wasn't working, so my doctor sent me to a neurosurgeon. I knew I had the herniated and bulging discs in my neck, as well as arthritis, and had heard that surgery might help. At that time, I was willing to do anything if it would alleviate my pain. Even surgery? Even surgery, yes. Wow. <laughs> I, was des I was desperate in a lot of pain. It was affecting sure. my life. So the neurosurgeon told me surgery wasn't an option. What he said was that I would be back every 10 years for another surgery, and at my age, that didn't make sense. Uh, what that told me was that the surgery wasn't actually going to fix the problem if I had to come back every 10 every years. 10 years right, yeah. yeah, so the only option he gave me was pain management the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. Although he did mention that I had terrible posture after making me wait for three hours to see him, <laughs> <laughs> he never told me that there was actually something I could do about it other than simply trying to force myself to stand or sit in a particular way. And that was something I just didn't have the ability to do for any length of time. So I left the neurosurgeon's office extremely discouraged, yet not willing to give up and live the rest of my life in pain. All of the hope I had in my doctors were pretty much dashed, but that loss of hope was actually the seed of a new beginning for me. Mm. I decided there, was, there must be something that I could do, and I went in search of it. After much research and some trial and error, I found what I had been searching for, something I could do that would change my posture and eliminate my pain. It wasn't a magic bullet, and I'm not even fully pain-free yet, but I've eliminated the majority of my chronic pain, and I continue to improve as my posture gets closer and closer to its blueprint design. Mm -hmm. uh, it's taken some work and a lot of dedication on my part, but in the words of Pete Agoscu, I never said it would be easy. I said it would be worth it. <laughs> I love and, that. Yeah, and so it has. Um, in fact, it was so effective, even early on, that I decided to become certified as a posture alignment specialist and leave my career as a loan officer to help others like myself find hope and healing through posture therapy. Wow, that's powerful. Yeah, so here, here on the screen is a list of some, of some of the symptoms of dysfunctions brought on by lack of motion or in, inadequate motion. So you may notice, and uh, some of these, they may be uh, things that you're, if you're listening to this, you probably have some kind of pain uh, and you can probably relate to some, if not many of them. So the approach is basically the human body made simple. We have eight load bearing joints and uh, we're gonna talk a little bit more about those very shortly. So it's also about changing your mind. Instead of asking what's wrong with me, ask what's my body trying to tell me. Mm -hmm. So if your feet aren't pointed straight ahead, for instance, maybe that's what's causing your hip pain or maybe even your neck pain. 
And trust your instincts. You know more about your body than anybody else, including doctors mm -hmm. and including me. Mm -hmm. um, we all know more about our bodies. We know what's going on and we know what we're feeling. Um, and I would say if you're in pain, it's not all in your head. Mm -hmm. uh, so remember, doctors told Pete his pain was all in his head, but he proved that wasn't the case. It was just a symptom of postural misal misalignment. Wow. When your doctor told you that you had poor posture, the, the, the uh, neurosurgeon, right? Yes. Was that, was that the thing that stuck with you, that, that kept you saying, you don't know, it wasn't in the back of your mind saying, let me investigate that? Is that what sent you on your, your journey? Actually, no. Um, I, it, it struck me, you know, what I thought was, well, you made me sit in a horrible chair and wait for you for three <laughs> hours on a lunch break where I have to go back to work and at work extra time to make up for it. Right. I'm, I'm in pain and I'm exhausted. I was kind of frustrated and upset at him. <laughs> mm -hmm. But looking uh -huh. back, when I found this, it all made sense. It all came, became clear. I was simply searching for anything that could help with neck and back pain. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, okay. I didn't. I didn't realize at the time. All I didn't realize there was something you could do to correct your posture aside from just trying to force it. You know, do it by thinking of it all the yeah, time. Chiro chiropractic is what I would think of. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, with chiropractic, if your muscles are chronically out of balance, they come back out. So you go to the right. chiropractor. Some people it pulls right back out before you get home. Yeah. Others, maybe it lasts a week and others, it may take a month. Mm -hmm. um, so for those who are, it's not working for, and chiropractic is great, um, they may, you know, it may be that their muscles are so out of balance that that's just not allowing it to hold. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so good posture is, muscular and skeletal balance. This is pretty much what it comes down to. And posture affects many, many things. You'll see the list here, um, but it, it definitely affects your health, your overall health. It affects your musculoskeletal system, affects every other system in your body. And it even affects how people perceive you and how you perceive yourself. And mm -hmm. there's a lot more coming to light these days about um, about this aspect of it. Many of you may have heard of Amy Cuddy and she talks about the research of how just changing your posture and, and doing power poses for two minutes can increase your confidence in yourself and others' perception um, mm. of their confidence in you. So um, if you can just power pose for two minutes, imagine if you can change, really truly just change your posture, mm. what that can do for you. Yeah. So we want to ask what's different from what we were designed to be. So here is a look at uh, a, the guy in the anatomy book. So every, all of you have either seen an anatomy book or in a doctor's office or a chiropractor's office or even a massage, you know, um, going to get a massage, you've probably seen a poster with a guy that looks like this, right? Mm -hmm. So you'll notice that his head is centered on the plumb line, his shoulders and pelvis are level, his knees and feet are pointed straight ahead. And also I'll point out that you can see the thumb and forefinger of his hands, but not the backs of his mm -hmm. hands. Mm -hmm. Many, many people have rounded shoulders and we can see that by seeing the backs of their hands when they're facing us. Mm. Interesting. So have a look at this gentleman. He, as you can imagine, is in pain. Mm. Um, you can see he's not lined up on the plumb line. He's very out of balance. And that, of course, is resulting in, in pain for him. Now here is a picture of him after some posture therapy. Wow. And you can see that it's much, much improved. His feet are still somewhat everted and they're not, he's not exactly symmetrical but he's come a long way and mm -hmm. so has his, his pain symptoms. Wow. And then we go to the side view here and it, the plumb line we, we place just before the ankle bone. So it goes up through the body and it should go through the posterior of the ear, the middle of the shoulder, the middle of the hip, the knee joint, 
all the way down. And there's a, a, a balance to the front and back, a little different than side to side. It's called dynamic tension when it's the front to the back. And you'll notice also this, this S curve, the spine there, um, that's the natural way that our spine should be for optimal performance and, and to not have pain, to have the best range of motion. And if you're lined up like the guy in the anatomy book, your spine is going to have that S curve. As our load joints, our eight load joints, the shoulders, the hips, the knees, and the ankle start getting out of alignment because of muscular imbalances, our S curve can be pulled out and it can go into a C curve or a J. Uh, we lose the, um, the integrity of our spine. All right, so we're back to the same gentleman and you can see that he's pretty much a C curve. His, um, his spine, he's lost his S curve. So his, he, I mean, he's kind of going forward a little bit, like his yeah, shoulders if you are look, going forward. Yeah, you, if you look, let's show you the uh, the after here. Do you see how in his lumbar spine, there's a nice curve in, yes, and then there's yes. a curve out, mm -hmm. and then another curve in in his neck. And if we go back to the first, it's it's he's losing that S curve. There's very little in his lumbar spine. Yeah. Mm. And he still has a bit in his neck, but he's losing part of that curve. And eventually he could be totally hunched over if he keeps going. Yes. And, right. and we've all, yeah, we've all seen that. Yeah. Yeah. And it's so much of that now. So yeah. Much. And, it, and it's very painful. Yeah. So as you can see, posture therapy is helping to straighten him out literally. Yeah, right. Wow. Okay. So um, it, it's about cause versus symptom posture therapy. Okay, so the site of the pain is rarely the source of the pain with chronic and recurrent pain. So unlike acute pain, such as you hit your thumb with a hammer, the site of the pain is the source of the pain. You know, you know what to do, you know what, what caused it, you know what happened, um, and you can address the pain. But with chronic and recurrent pain, seldom is the site of the pain the source of the pain. So take my neck pain. For example, even with a diagnosis of a herniated and bulging disc and a precipitating incident, the car accident, the source of my pain was not in my neck, but in my pelvis and shoulders, which is why my doing the physical therapy exercises increased my pain and limitations when they had me stretch my neck and why posture, mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> why posture therapy worked by addressing my body as a unit. So that's the second thing. We believe the body is a unit. Okay. Anything in the body um, that is out of alignment will affect the rest of the body. Mm -hmm. So if you look to the right here at our little stick guy, if there's a dysfunction in the ankle, the weak ankle, the ankle, something happened to the ankle and, and the integrity of the ankle, it's out of alignment. You can have pain anywhere else in the body. I have someone that I worked with that had neck pain, a lot of neck pain, hard to sleep because of an ankle injury. And after just a few classes, she could sleep with no neck pain. Wow. So yeah, it's pretty great. Um, yeah. You know, the body's pretty amazing how quickly it, you know, it responds to stimulus, whether that's good or bad. Uh, so we, we want to start asking more questions. You know, wh why is this going on? What's this pain mean? Mm -hmm. Not just silencing it, you know, with pain meds are great um, to an extent, but we all know what's what's happening with pain meds and, mm -hmm. and the, the concern of taking them long term. Right, yeah. So we ask what our body's trying to tell us. And um, with posture therapy, we can really look at the body and see not only just know what the pains or the diagnosis is, but see what's going on in the body. You know, well, your feet are turned out. Well, there's a reason for that. Muscles are bringing it there. And so that leads us to the last point that bones do muscle, do what muscles tell them to do. Hmm. Okay, so our muscles are kind of, they're in control. And if we can change our muscle memory, which is, which is what we do with the posture therapy, uh, then those muscles can we can bring those into balance through simple, gentle exercises and stretches, and 
once those are in balance, it just pulls everything else into where they're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Okay, so poor posture equals poor function. So this guy, a lot of people would look at him and think he's pretty fit. Mm -hmm. Well, what we see upon further inspection is that his feet are turned out, or what we call everted, um, one more than the other. They're in different places. His knees, they're a little hard to see, but they're turned out as well. They're not facing straight ahead as they should be. And he has rounded shoulders, which we can see because we see the backs of his hands. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, no. yeah. So <laughs> his body's yeah. talking to us and his body's mm -hmm. saying, and, but many of us don't know this. I did not know this before mm. I, I came across Egoscu. So these are things that we can look at and we can make changes to to improve his posture, thus making him less prone to injury, pains, limitations, making him more healthy and functional in all the systems of his body. Because remember, mm -hmm. the body's a unit and one system affects another for better or worse. Right, right, right. So what we want to do, see if this guy goes out and he wants to hit a golf ball or, I don't know, chop some wood or mm -hmm. go for a run, whatever the activity he wants to do is, he is already set up to potentially hurt himself to, to get some pain or injury. Mm -hmm. So what we want to do is to fix the body going into the activity versus activity avoidance. Okay, so what happens is we get start to get pains and we start limiting what we do. You know, I can't do that anymore. Or I knew I shouldn't have done that. You know, right. we, hear, we hear that all the time. Mm -hmm. But what if we could fix the body so that we could do whatever we want without pain or the fear of pain? And that's what we're shooting for. So unfortunately, mm -hmm. we're experiencing compromised posture and pain and physical limitations at a younger and younger age than ever before. Unfortunately, without intervention, this child will experience more and more pain, symptoms, and physical limitations. But good for him, his parents took him to a clinic and he receives care. Wow. So now is the fun time. <laughs> okay. So we're going to test it a little bit and we're going to experience just a few of the exercises. Um, but I want to go over a few things first. Uh, first, listen to your body. Okay. If you're listening to this, you probably have some kind of pain or limitation. Really listen to your body. If your body tells you, you know, you shouldn't be doing this or if it's aggravating a chronic or recurrent pain, please stop. Okay, we don't want to force our bodies to do anything they're, that they're not able to do at this time. And it's counterproductive to, um, to healing your body and, and getting rid of pain. So only take what your body is willing to give at this time. And these are just an example of what some of the e-sizes can do and may not be the stimulus your body wants or needs at this time. Okay, so if you have, like I had upper neck, upper body pain, these might not feel great to you. Um, so please don't take the whole of the method from these. They're just really a few really great exercises that though we're working the upper body, they actually balance the whole body. And we're gonna have a look at that and um, see what they do to our body. So first thing that I want you to do if you feel like you can um, can try these, is to stand up and stand in a comfortable position, um, preferably with your eyes shut. Now, if you are uncomfortable shutting your eyes, feel free to leave them open. But just for this, this is not for the exercise, just, just for the balance test to see what you're noticing in your body before we go into the, the exercises. So, you're standing, eyes shut if you're comfortable. And I want you to notice the your, what your balance is like right now. Do you feel balanced? I feel like I'm swaying a little bit. Okay, and that, that's a normal thing that many will feel. And notice your feet. So is there more weight in one foot than the other? Hmm. Now, notice where the weight is in your right foot. Is it more in the ball or the heel, more in the inside or the outside? 
and then go to your left foot. Notice the same thing. Is the weight more in the ball or the heel, the inside or the outside? Now, is that different left to right? And many people will notice a difference. Yes, okay. I, I, I have a difference. Okay. So go on up and notice your ankles. How do they feel? Do you feel a difference? So some people may feel like, again, there's more weight into one, or maybe you feel like, you know, one of them's kind of collapsing in. It's not as steady. Um, but is there any difference? And then you can go on up to your knees and just feel those. Is there any difference left to right? Maybe you feel like your knees are flexed or, or maybe, you know, they hyperextend and you can feel that. And then go on up to your hips. Now the hips, a lot of people, especially with their eyes closed and they're just focusing in on their body, they may notice that they can actually feel that one hip is higher or more forward than the other. So can you notice that? And maybe you don't notice that, but maybe you notice there's something different going on left to right. Maybe there's more, a little tightness or pain. Maybe it's just a, some kind of feeling and you're not sure what it is. So just take note of that. So going up to your shoulders and notice those. Much like your hips, a lot of people will notice there's one higher feeling or more forward. And then this day and age, most people definitely notice a difference left to right. There's one side that something's different is going on from the other. So just notice that. What is it? How's it feel? Go on up and notice your neck and your head and how they feel today. What's going on? Maybe you have some neck pain, stiffness. Maybe you have a headache. Um, go on down to your low back. How's that feeling right now? Your mid back, your upper back. Notice your abdomen and your chest. Now, if I've been sitting a lot, even with doing these exercises for some time now, uh, I feel pretty collapsed in my in my torso. If I've been sitting a lot, sitting at my computer, I haven't done my exercises. Mm. Um, so notice, do you feel kind of collapsed in your posture? What does your torso feel like? Can you breathe well? What's your breathing like? Take a nice breath. What's it feel like? Okay. It's amazing what we notice when we stop and take a moment and shut our eyes. Okay, so I want you to just really notice what stands out the most to you right now. Remember everything, kind of how you felt. You're not going to be tested. If you forget, it's okay. Mm -hmm. But just kind of get a sense for what you're noticing. Because we're going to come back to this after we do the, the next few exercises. Okay, so the first one is going to be standing arm circles. Now, I'm going to walk you through how to do them. Don't start doing them yet. Um, first and most important thing is your foot position. Okay, so now I'm going to ask you to stand with your feet hip width apart and toes pointed straight ahead. So I'm going to explain what that means. Your feet hip width apart should be the heels far enough apart that you could put about two of your fists between your heels or a dollar bill. Okay, so maybe six inches between your heels. But then your toes, there should be about a fist width between those, only about a fist width. Your toes are going to look probably slightly pigeon-toed. So look at the girl in the picture, okay? See how her toes are pointed straight ahead? Also, you can look at your feet. If you're barefoot, that's great. If you're in shoes, that's fine. Hopefully not heels. Kick them off if you're in heels. <laughs> <laughs> um, barefoot's great or socks, but... Um, Feet straight ahead is the second and third toes kind of parallel or line between the second and third toes. So it may feel pigeon-toed. If this causes pain to put your feet straight ahead, put them as close to straight ahead as you can equally. Okay, don't let one of them turn out more than the other. Just do what you can. We'll work with what our body's willing to give. Okay, so the second thing is a hand position. And these are very important to... Um, all these things are very important to the effectiveness. Why this method so effective? So we're going to take our hands, and, and I don't know how well you can tell from the screen there, but we're going to take our fingers to the pads of our palms, the tops of the pads of our palms. So it's, it's like um, not like you're having a fist 
but mm. just curl in your fingers. You're, you can see mo most of your palms, your thumbs are out. Then keep that hand position and the foot position. Put your, shoulder, your arms at your sides. Bring your shoulder blades together and down your back. Okay, and hold them there about 50% effort towards each other. Not gonna hurt ourselves. And then you're gonna lift your arms up, keeping those shoulder blades together and down. Lift your arms to about shoulder height. And we're gonna start going up and forward in about six inch circles. So like a six inch dinner plate. And, you, and I'm gonna count them for you, okay? So we're gonna do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. Okay, if you can do it, stop, stay in the same position, take a breath, lit, turn, keep in the same hand position, shoulder, shoulders together, Put your, turn your palms up towards the ceiling, thumbs back, pointing backwards, okay? Now we're gonna do 25 more going up and back. Same thing. And we're thing. circling our, our hands here? Is that what we're, we're doing? We're circling our arms. Okay. Okay, mm -hmm. so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. All right, rest your arms down. No, good. <laughs> they're, they're hard for, especially if you aren't used to doing a lot of arm exercises, they can be fatiguing. Again, if, stop if anything is too much. We don't want to push our bodies past what they really want to do right now. Okay, so what I'd like you to do is if you have changed your where you're standing in your foot position, go back to feet, hip width apart, toes pointed straight ahead. We're going to do standing elbow curls. We're going to do 15 of them. Okay, and these look really easy. They're deceiving. <laughs> so we're going to, they're, they're not easy for most people um, today because we have a lot of thoracic rounding, a lot of tightness in our upper back and shoulders. So we're going to do that same golfer's grip with the hands, bringing our fingers to the pads of the palm, thumbs out. Okay. And we take a good look at the screen. So, because if you have glasses, what I want, you might want to flip them up on your head or put them aside or put them into your shirt because you're going to put your first and second knuckle on your temples on each side, just like in the picture, thumbs down. Okay. And you're going to bring your elbows back as far as they can, shoulder blades together. And you're going to slowly bring your elbows towards each other without bending your wrist. That's very important. Don't bend your wrist. Only come as far as your most limited shoulder will allow you to go, okay? You may not be able to touch elbows like the lady in the picture. Most people can't the first time they tried them. So we're gonna go in and back out, in and out. Okay, we're gonna go a bit slower than arm circles because these tend to take a bit more, <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. even though they look pretty easy, but... simple. They look like they would be a simple thing. They're not so simple for many, many people. It's an amazing exercise. The foot position in these, and I'm not counting yeah. <laughs> anymore, so we're oh, just going to do a hand. We're, okay, great. Thanks, Alicia. <laughs> um, I love my counters. So having the foot position actually makes this a full body exercise doing this upper body work actually affects your your ankles your knees your hips everything your whole spine um, in a very positive way so we're probably about at 15 i'm guessing a little bit more okay okay mm -hmm. and we're going to go on to the last exercise and then we're going to check back in okay? okay so again feet hip width apart, toes pointing straight ahead. This is called standing overhead extension. Before we go into it, um, a couple of things. Keep your elbows very straight. Once you have to bend your elbows, you're not doing the exercise as um, intended anymore, and you're, you're not gonna be affecting the, the, the proper muscles. 
You may not be able to go up as far as this gentleman in the picture. That's okay. Go as far as you can comfortably and come out of it if it's creating any pain. Okay, so we're going to clasp our hands together, push our palms away from us, elbows really straight. We're going to lift them up above our head. Okay, as far as we can go, um, ideally up to about where our ears are. If you can lift your head up and look up, great. If that hurts your neck, just look straight ahead. Okay, we don't have to look up. Okay, relax your abs. Notice if they feel like they're pulling, if they're tight. We're going to just hold this. We're not moving in this. It's just usually we spend about a minute in it. So I'm going to give you several, several more seconds to just breathe and relax. And hopefully enjoy the stretch. Mm -hmm. um, for some people, yes. it's a, some people it's a stretch to enjoy the stretch. Yeah. So gotcha. Yeah. That feels good. <laughs> um, okay. So go ahead and rest your arms back down at your sides. Just I don't know. Take a breath. Relax. Wiggle around if you need. Yeah. I feel like I need to shake it out yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. It can make you feel a little stiff. Mm -hmm. Um. So. We're, we're now, in just a moment, I want to point out a couple of things here, or a few things, but before we do the balance retest, okay? So what I want you to do is, um, once we go into this, I want you to just walk in place and go back to a comfortable standing position. Don't place your feet like I had you do before. Just let your feet go where they want to go. We want to really just kind of look at what did this do, these just few things do to our bodies, and how does that make us feel? So some people will notice they feel more balanced or grounded. Some people say they have less pain or stiffness. Some feel taller, more opened up. Some more relaxed, less tightness and tension, improved breathing, enhanced mood. And some people give me crazy descriptions that no one else does. <laughs> so that's great. So go ahead and just, um, if you can, if you shut your eyes before, shut your eyes again, stand comfortably, take a breath and let it go. And notice once again, what's your balance like? Did it change any? Notice your feet. Is there a difference, a, a change? Like if you were leaning more into one, did that, are, are you more balanced left to right? Did where you were placing your weight in each foot, did that balance out any? Did it change? Notice your ankles and did anything change there? Your knees, your hips, your shoulders. Notice your neck and your head. Your, your torso, low back, mid back, upper back, abdomen and chest. What was it that stood out to you before? What did you notice? And has anything changed? We, we basically provided a stimulus to our bodies. We put our body under a demand in a probably most likely more balanced, um, uh, better aligned posture because of the foot position than our bodies are used to. So there's going to be some kind of response to that stimulus, most likely. And if there is, then you'll most likely notice something. I just, I feel more balanced and grounded. Great. My breathing is better. Good, awesome. Okay, so this is kind of an extreme example of someone who had one session about three hours long of posture therapy. As you can see in her after picture, she still doesn't have fabulous posture, but wow, what an improvement. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And she was ecstatic and thrilled. <laughs> yes, I'll bet you um, so that that now people who are that extreme, much, you know, very quick changes, obviously, because there's such an extreme difference. Um, well, but, yeah, well, that for that lady, would that hold? Like, if she continues to do the exercises, it will. If she continues to do them, that is one of the keys to the success of this therapy. Is we have to change the muscle memory. Okay, our bodies are the result of all the stimulus we provided it up to this point. So if we're in pain, you know, it's because of the stimulus that we provided it. So adding in this new positive stimulus can actually change our muscle memory over mm -hmm. time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's yeah. quick results, but this would go away if she never did it again. It right. would, she'd yeah. go back to the same thing because that's what our body's used to. Mm -hmm. Okay. But as she continues to do it, there's, there's, there, there are 
changes and yes. they're going to stay as long as she continues to give it stimulus you know mm -hmm. and, and it may be that she doesn't need as much of the posture therapy later on as she's you know, more active and she can move around and she's living life you know yeah well with those sorts of results why would she not want to continue right i mean absolutely that's dramatic absolutely so the next is yours truly oh, hello. <laughs> hello there yeah so you'll notice and and had i known at the time i took that first picture that i would be showing this to so many people i would not have worn that bathing suit but because <laughs> i did i kept it and i actually still kind of fit into it even though it's big and baggy so i want you to i want to point out some things um now this is uh, extended time in posture therapy oh oh uh oh something's going on okay <laughs> there you go good so now i want you to notice in the first the before picture there on your left the vertical line the plumb line that is placed between the ankles okay when we do the posture photos and it goes up the body and it should dissect the body in half left being equal to right um, when you're a lot of people out of balance, you know, are going to be to one side or another, or something's going to be different left to right. Um, you'll, I want you to notice that you can see a lot of the backs of my hands. That means I had rounded shoulders. And notice my knees and ankles, they are definitely not stacked under my hip joints, mm -hmm. <laughs> the bony right. protrusion of the hip on the front. Mm -hmm. So um, a lot of people get that narrow stance, some, some a wide stance to, to kind of steady themselves. Notice if you can see there on your screen, my right ankle, it looks like it's about to snap. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it does. <laughs> it, very unstable. Notice in the after picture. Now I'm a work in progress for sure. Um, I still have a ways to go, but my knees and ankles are in a better position. My ankle doesn't look like it's going to just snap. Um, I'm, you know, I'm still off a little. This was actually a while ago. I haven't taken new pictures in a while, but you can see there's some positive changes there. I want to go on. Um, oh, I, I guess I should point out. Yes, I did lose weight because that's what everybody says. Okay. <laughs> um, and they always ask, well, was it this? I believe that it was yes and no it was this because once my pain started going away i stopped living my life sleeping right. lying around conserving my movements because everything when i moved it hurt and i didn't eat to make myself feel better mm -hmm. you know i would do that some i ate pretty good but but i didn't always make the best choices because i was in pain and mm -hmm. i wanted to comfort myself and i know there's a lot of people probably listening or that will hear this that can can relate to that mm -hmm. because i've talked to a lot of people that do so notice in the back picture what i want to point out with this one is my shoulders look how much more relaxed my shoulders are in the after picture than in the before now i had extreme neck in this first picture neck upper back and shoulder pain pain everywhere but that's where it was mostly and as that has gone away my body's just more relaxed and you know i, I didn't feel like my shoulders are all up in my neck mm -hmm. and from the side photo you'll see again that um there's a pretty good difference. I'm very forward of the line, my knees, my hips, my shoulders, my head. Um, still not perfect, but working on it <laughs> every day. <laughs> okay. um, so working on getting all my load joints properly stacked, all the muscles balanced. And the great thing is that every time I do it, it makes me feel better. Mm. Um, when I start to get stressed or I, you know, I've been sitting a lot and you feel that stress and I know you all know what I'm talking about. Um, I do my I look forward to doing my exercises. It's kind of like when I'm hungry, I eat, when I'm thirsty, I drink. Well, I do some of my exercises and it just makes me feel good. Mm -hmm. So this is one of one of my clients who um, after six weeks went from the first photo of being you can see he's like rotated. You can see a lot of the front of his body. It looks like he's ready to pitch pitch mm -hmm. forward and fall. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, off of the plumb line and then six weeks time doing his exercises. I believe he did them about five days a week. You can see he's much, you know, he still has a way to go, but he's much better. Looks much more picture. stable. Mm -hmm. Now, this client, this, she, in the first photo, she was having a major back spasm and a lot of pain. 
she called me and said that she was going to a chiropractor and so she called me when she, I, I talked to her into coming back in uh, or, or into coming in to see me before she went to the chiropractor just to get pictures. So this, the first picture is she came in before the chiropractor. She went to the chiropractor's office, went home and she called me and said, it really didn't help much. I'm still in extreme pain. And I talked to her into coming back in. And after a couple of hours, she walked out straighter than she had been in a long time in this after photo here. Hmm. Yeah. Yes pretty exciting yeah so this client is um, came in with um, sciatica and a herniated disc amongst other things some numbness and tingling and things going on in her down her leg and into her foot and in six weeks time she went from extreme pain barely being able to walk to days with no pain or issues walking in fact, when she first came, she, was, she wasn't even walking upstairs. She was living in downstairs, wasn't even sleeping in her bedroom because going wow. up and downstairs was just too much. She looks young. I don't, I obviously I can't see her face, but. Yeah, she's, she's, she's pretty young. So yeah, she actually had um, surgery for a herniated disc. Months later, it came back, the sciatica came back on the other side. She had surgery scheduled and canceled it to do the posture therapy. And um, she's, she's coming along great. She's continuing to do her exercises. As we talked about, we can get you out quickly, you know, get you out of pain quickly, but it will come back if you don't change your muscle memory because no. your body will just go back to that same position. So it does, it, it does take some time, but mm -hmm. boy, is it worth it. Mm -hmm. So you can see in her after picture, she's much more aligned. Her feet aren't as turned out. She's, you know, not leaning all the way into the one side. Her hips look straighter. Yes. She is a much happier camper, as you can see from her face. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. th this client came in with a degenerative hip and difficulty putting on her shoes and socks and, and walking, of course. Um, you can see from her picture, she's quite off, much like the last one, very leaning to one side. Um, and the after picture, she's much more balanced. Um, she has, in just weeks of um, therapy, been able to, you know, much less difficulty putting her shoes and socks on. She's like, oh, I can lift my leg. This is great. Mm. Um, and she is determined not to have to have surgery. Um, she's seen, as she's told me, she's seen what, what people who have had surgery um, there's been a lot of bad, bad outcomes, unfortunately. And so she's determined not to go that route mm -hmm. and, um, she's doing great. So next he came in with back pain and it, he's had back pain since his teens. Uh, it began to limit his ability to do one of the things he loved so much, which was walking. He loved to walk like an hour at a time. And he was down to maybe walk in five or 10 minutes before he had too much pain and he had to stop. Mm. So one of his goals was, I want to walk for an hour. I want to be able to walk without pain. Mm -hmm. And as you can see in his after picture, his posture is much improved. He's not so kind of bent over mm -hmm. and he was able to pretty quickly get back to, to walking like he wanted an hour. So and is this happening? Is this in one session? Deb? Uh, some of them are in one session. Some are not. Um, mo most, uh, the one was in one session. Most of these are in a handful of sessions. Okay. Okay. And the sessions are la lasting. I'm sure you'll get into that. So I don't want to jump ahead, but yep. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, this client came in with multiple pain issues and as you can see much like myself she not only eliminated much of her pains and uh well you can imagine her pains but her posture has is better aligned um but she was also able to um lose weight in the process now she's been with me for a while and um she has found this to be so wonderful that she is currently going through certification to be an, a posture alignment specialist as well. So there's going to be someone else in the area okay. <laughs> in New Jersey as well. Um, let's see next. So this client had pains, but her main reason for doing the posture therapy when she found out about it was to improve her posture. She's been told her whole life how her posture was and 
she, you know, could see how it was getting worse and not better. And she didn't know what to do about it. She just thought, well, I just try to stand good and whatever, but, but I, you forget about it. Mm -hmm. Um, so she's thrilled that she has something that can actually affect her posture. And it has, as you can see, um, she's much less kind of collapsing in her body. Um, she's also been able to get rid of pains and, you know, that's been a, a plus, really a plus for her, not the main goal. Big difference. So this is a client that had, um, an extreme case of scoliosis that wasn't responding well to chiropractic care. So in just six sessions, this is six sessions that you see here for her. Um, she went from pain levels of like eight and nine, pretty regular eight and nine pain levels to a pain level of two in this last session here. Wow. Um, she was thrilled. Okay. So I don't know if you, some people without a trained eye may not be able to tell the difference, but there's a big difference in her posture, in the curve of her spine. Um, you can kind of look at the space between her, her arm, her uh, left arm, and that has decreased. She's kind of lifting up. Oh, um, oh she yeah. Thrilled. She did wonderful. She's, a, you know, pretty young, as you can tell, <laughs> beautiful girl. And um, it, it's just been miraculous for her. So oh. what exactly is posture therapy? Posture therapy is a process which involves a series of stretches and gentle exercises designed specifically for each client. This process strengthens specific muscles and brings the body back to its proper alignment and functioning the way it was designed, pain-free. So the steps of posture therapy. First, we rediscover the body's design. So remember the guy or the gal in the anatomy book, what we saw earlier. We know what our goal is. We want to have a certain, you know, look to our posture and it's pretty easy to pinpoint that. Um, and as we get closer and closer to that, that's when we begin to, the, to um, allow our bodies to function better. And throughout that process, it's restoring function. Okay, so these exercises and stretches they restore function to our body. They, they get our body to start moving in ways it should be able to move, increases range of motion, um, and start and people start getting rid of their limitations as well as their pain. So, you know, oh, I can't get up and down off the floor anymore, you know, or mm -hmm. difficulty. I had the worst time getting up and down off the floor. That's how much pain I was in. Mm -hmm. Now I can get up and down without using my hands if I want. Wow. Yeah, so um, you, we restore function, so you don't have limitations. So, you know, if you wanted to go out and, you know, climb a tree like you did when you were a kid, mm -hmm. assuming you did that, you could do that. Not that you would, but that you could <laughs> if you wanted. Mm -hmm. um, but doing that is about, again, changing the muscle memory over time. It's about reprogramming. So we kind of have to incorporate it as, as a, a wonderful stimulus, a wonderful part of our life. Um, now the body is able to heal once it's aligned as it was designed and that's the return to health. Right. Yeah. So what's the next step? You can work with a posture alignment specialist like myself. Um, there's in-person visits. There's also online therapy if, you know, in person is not conducive to, you know, whatever, where you are. Maybe you're not very close to a, a specialist and it's hard to get out of your house. You could do it online. Um, there's books. This is where I started. I highly recommend the pain book, Pain Free by Pete Agoscu. That's my favorite book of his for anybody in chronic, with chronic or recurrent pain. Your library probably has it. I know Burlington and, and Camden County libraries have this book. They have some of his books. They definitely have his pain-free book. But now everybody's going to run out and try to get it from the library. So <laughs> <laughs> there may be a wait. Um, it's around $10 on Amazon. Or you can get it at a local bookstore. But I think it runs about $17 at a local bookstore like Barnes & Noble. And he um, explains, does he give illustrations in there of the he, exercises and he, things? He does of some of the exercises. It's an amazing book. I recommend it to anybody. I mm -hmm. recommend it to the people who come to me, even for the therapy. And in fact, those who read the book are the best clients because mm -hmm. they get it and it makes sense and they've done it and they want more. 
Mm -hmm. um, you know, they, they, the book pain free helps to mitigate your pain. It can help you get out of pain, but it may not take you there to where your posture is fully aligned. You may need more work for that. Um, but definitely start out with the book. There's online resources. You can go to YouTube, plug in Agoscu exercises for back pain, neck pain, whatever your pain is, whatever your situation, sciatica, um, carpal tunnel syndrome, whatever the thing is, most likely something will pop up, maybe several, that'll give you like three exercises for low back pain. And try them out. They show you how to do them. Um, they're short videos. It, it'll probably only take you five, 10 minutes tops. You can try them out and see, does this resonate with you? You know, is it something that makes you feel good? Is it something that you think you want to do? Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, we have, I hold local classes and workshops, um, primarily out of Yoga for Living in Cherry Hill. Um, and there's, I'll have more info on wh where you can go for information on that. I hold a Tuesday night class that regularly, I have a workshop actually coming up, a uh, three-week um, series workshop for neck and shoulder pain starting in about a month, end of March, last two weeks, last two Fridays of March, 1st of April. So you might want to check that out if you have neck and shoulder pain. Uh, so for more information about me and Aligned by Design, uh, you can contact me by phone, which is listed here, uh, or email. You can check out my website or you can go to my Facebook page and there's some information there. I typically post articles every once in a while. I'm not on there a lot, <laughs> mm -hmm. but there are, there is, there's some information on there. And um, so that's information about me. You can uh, also get more information about posture therapy. I recommend you go to agoscu.com. They have some, a lot of great information on agoscu's website. And there's a really great article that Dr. Axe has on his website. So there's a link there for that. Um, if you're looking for a posture alignment specialist in your area, go to that link. It's on agoscu.com. You search for certified practitioners, plug in your state, and it'll pop up anybody that is, um, that is in the area that meets the requirements to be listed on that website. Okay, and you'll find me on there. Also, uh, for more information about the classes and workshops, um, that I hold weekly at Yoga for Living, you can go to yogaforliving.net and that link takes you straight to my page, Posture Alignment. And also you can sign up with me by emailing me for um, email notification of any Posture Alignment classes or workshops in the South Jersey area. I don't do everything exclusively at Yoga for Living. Sometimes I have free ones at the libraries, Burlington and Camden County. Um, you know, or just different, maybe another yoga studio um, at a church, um, different places in the area. I don't send a lot of emails, so don't worry about that. I don't give your, sell your email or give it to anyone. Mm -hmm. If you are interested just in classes or workshops, that's all I send out so that you can go um, shoot me an email and I'll put you on my list. And lastly, um, I will send to you, if you email me, I will send you the three um, the three E sizes we did today, the balancing E sizes, the 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 instructions, the pictures, and there's um, a um, video link as well, so that you know that you're doing them right, okay? Because you might not remember all the little details. So um, you just specify if you want to be added to my email list when you ask for them. If you don't specify, I'm going to add you to my list. So if you don't want to be on my list, <laughs> say please don't add me to the list, but please send me the exercises. Okay, fair and enough. I'll and I will do that. Um, so I just wanted to, I love Pete Agoscu's quotes. They're really great. And you could look them up. Um, but I just wanted to give you a couple of them before we end. Um, he says, pain is not a disease, not an injury, not even an effect of aging. Pain is a symptom, a symptom of postural imbalance. Mm. And until you recognize the need, the absolute requirement for taking responsibility, you will not mm. succeed. Once you do accept the responsibility, however, the Agoscu method never fails, never. No drugs, no surgery, no machines, no miracles, just you, a normal person doing normal things. Mm. That's what it's about. It's about maybe you need to, you know, the help of a posture and alignment specialist for a while, 
but we do our best to equip our clients with the things they need so that ultimately they can you know take care of themselves mm -hmm. we give you tools and you know what works for you and we help you to really get in tune with your body and listen to your body and what's it telling you and and how what what stimulus do you need when that back pain creeps in or that neck pain creeps in right yeah oh. and so thank you alicia tdi mm -hmm. for supporting holistic health care and my pleasure <laughs> thank you so much for having me uh, and, that was also my pleasure yeah and i will leave leave it up to you now <laughs> okay so i just have a, just a couple comments and questions on an initial consult how much time should one allow does it or does it vary um client to client on an initial consult okay and that well that can depend on therapist to therapist as well okay right? so yes it can depend on the client with my initials, um, I usually really take my time and spend it with the client as long as they have the time to do it. If they don't have the time, I'm willing to, you know, kind of pare it down and work with them. Always whatever the client needs, that's what I'm going to go with. But most of my clients do not mind three hours for a first session. There's okay. A, yeah, there's a lot to do. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I like to take my time with the client and not feel like they're being rushed or and that they can we can really address everything and make sure that they're walking out feeling better and knowing what they need to do between the first session and the second. Right. OK. Yeah. And I, I love that the, both of those quotes, but especially the, the second one mm -hmm. and uh, just really this simplicity of this approach, you know, doing putting the body back into alignment and mm -hmm. letting the body do what it does giving yes. it a chance to heal and you know you gave us some great um just i think walking through that exercise was fantastic because you could see how how you, your body responded to that yes you know yes. how challenging it was or not and so yeah, yeah. it was just just great yeah um yeah, I find uh, that even I've done those th those in workshops, you know, face to face, and and almost every time, almost every person does notice a positive difference, even if it hurt when they did it, and they still did it, and it was hurting. They came out and they're like, "Wow, I feel actually better." Yeah, <laughs> and that's the that was the beauty of that. I mean, yeah. I you know I didn't expect really to feel much of anything, but I did, and mm. simple. Three little it's, exercises, yeah. Yes, it's it's. I'm telling you, it's yeah. a life. I'm a believer. Changer. I'm a believer. And, <laughs> and, and 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 actually, a lifesaver in some cases. I've yes. had, I've had, I've heard stories of people that said this was their last. You know, nothing else worked. This was their last thing. Yeah. I, one person said they couldn't even lift a spoon to feed themselves. Wow. They were going to actually end their life if 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 they it didn't. If it didn't, it didn't work. work and guess what it worked and she became certified as, as a posture alignment specialist and is now helping people wow that's powerful <laughs> stuff yeah that's really fantastic i would imagine that um this would be great for athletes to be Absolutely. able to for you to be able to take a look at them see where their weak weak spots are and address them before they get hurt yes actually that would be invaluable it is it is great for athletes in fact um jack nicholas is one of egoski's biggest endorsers he um oh. he was uh Egoski was able to get him he, he was going to pull out of a tournament i don't remember i don't know when it was but he was going to do a tournament and he was in such pain and pete's like wait a minute don't pull out yet and he worked with them and he was able to play and i honestly i don't even know if he how well he did but he played and he can um he says that it's because of pete that he was able to to continue to play golf wow um, yeah there's a lot of um famous athletes that do agoscu in fact um many of you may have heard of bethany hamilton she is the one who lost her arm to a shark bite right. she was she was um a surfer she does agoscu to keep her body balanced because once you lose a limb you know there your body is going to continually be prone to imbalance so right. it's one of the things she does to help keep her body balanced mm. and keep surfing wow that's that's great stuff. Um, do you, do you work much with physical therapists? Do they ever use this um, Egoscue method? Well, um, I don't work much with them. My, one, I can say that one of my clients is a physical therapy assistant mm -hmm. who 
is she's wonderful and she actually promotes um, and, and utilizes some of this. She's not certified in it, but she utilizes some of it. And she talks, you know, refers people to it. Um, there are some physical therapists that are certified in it, but none that around here that I know of. Um, and some are starting to use it. It's, it's, it's been slow in coming out because Agoscu doesn't advertise. He basically, the philosophy is we help one person at a time, they get better and they tell other people. So it's word of mouth. It's spreading from California. It's taken a long time to get here. Okay, well, it's getting here, and that's what's important, you know. And, that's and, right. And you found it, and now that's you're, right. you're now telling I'm, us about it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I'm spreading it. <laughs> you're spreading it, so you're doing your job. So we've got a couple of comments uh, okay. from folks. Uh, Stacy, I it looks like you were able to log on, so I'm glad uh, Kristen helped her out. Thank you for that. Leslie, when we were doing the exercises, she said, do your fingers have to be clasped? Clasp together. Clasp together. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know when. Okay, well. Oh, um, when, when, I guess maybe when we we're doing the one with the hands over the head. Yeah, you with the standing overhead extension, you want to clasp your fingers together, push, hold like you're holding hands with yourself, and then you push them palms out. And lift them over your head. Now you could. There is an exercise where you just, lift, you know, yoga where you just lift your arms straight up, and that's a great stretch. Just, but it's doing something different. Okay, Leslie just checked in again and said her question was in regard to the exercise with arms outstretched. The arm circles. Okay, you're. We're doing the golfer's grip. So the fingers are curled in to the pads of your palms, the tops of your palms, thumbs out, but your hands are out to your sides, like in, in the, the, I can go back to the photo. Okay, that'd be helpful. There we go. So your arms are shoulder height out to your sides, like in the two big pictures there. Okay. So, and we're, we were trying to do the work with your shoulders. So a lot of people really kind of try to do them, you know, with their, like swinging their arms around, but the movement mm -hmm. should come from the shoulders. But if your shoulders are really tight and mm -hmm. don't have a lot of good range of motion, that may be hard to do. But, you know, we start with what we can do. And, and right. as we do them, it quickly changes. Right, right. Good. Okay. Um, Stacy made a comment, I guess, when we were doing the exercises, she said she found one shoulder won't go back. Okay. okay. Yeah, I'm sure that's I don't know if that's common or not. Um, well, I, and, and I'll say something to that. Yeah, go quickly. ahead. Um, if that's the case, then we would probably, if one shoulder's not going back, I would not give you that exercise. I would give you something that we could do that the key with these exercises being effective is to get your body in a good aligned position with whatever we're doing. So we may at first possibly avoid um, certain exercises for someone that their shoulder's stuck. We may work more with the lower body and that's gonna positively affect the upper body. Mm -hmm. and, and so it's not a one size fits all. You kind of customize no. the, the, the uh, exercises for the patient, the client. Absolutely, very yeah. much, very much. It's very individualized. We listen to, to our clients and we work with them. That's why it takes time because it, it's not just, I don't just spit out, oh, well here, just take these three things home. They work for everybody. Mm -hmm. Okay, you know, no, because yeah. You know, we need feedback and the feedback of our clients is so important. Um, so it's it's really we're working together mm -hmm. um, and what the client has to say and what they're feeling is so important. Right. So we really tap into that and, mm -hmm. and help, you know, we're partners, really. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Uh, Donna asks, do you come to homes for one on one? I have not. I do not typically. <laughs> Okay. If, if there was, I would potentially entertain that idea if there was, if, if it was a need for it. I would okay. pretend so. You can check with me if that's a need. Yeah. Have Donna contact you. Mm hmm. Okay. Christine asks, does insurance cover this? Not that I know of. It's much like ch chiropractor was, you know, chiropractic was years ago. Mm -hmm. um, I do the, um, the thing, 
I can't think of what it is right now, where, you know, the account, the health care savings the, account, the, I the think. The claim form? Oh, okay. Like it, a health, health say, savings account? Yeah, that people can use it for that. Um, I was actually told, and I have to figure out how to kind of let people know this, I don't actually have insurance. I have health care sharing, Samaritan Ministries. And they told me if a doctor recommended Egoscue therapy, they would pay for it. Oh, okay? wow. So, but insurance companies, I recommend for people who are interested to submit it to see. But to my knowledge, no insurance companies cover it yet. And it's okay. a shame because it's so effective. <laughs> no, but you, you did say yet. You know, so yet. I, yeah, I can see this being I expect, something that, yeah, sure. Absolutely. I expect that one day it will, um, hey, healthcare sharing, my healthcare sharing said they would cover it. So, yeah. you know, it's coming. Just a matter of time. Yep, yeah. that's right. Uh, Kristen asks, should the E sizes be done daily? They should. Yeah. Um, we're, re we're changing the muscle memory. What I tell my clients is preferably daily, okay, five to seven days a week is definitely optimal. If you do it less, you're still going to get some benefit, but it's not going to be the same. It really isn't. Mm -hmm. I do have some people I've worked with that use it as a pain relief thing. They won't do it daily, but boy, when they have that pain, they do it and they get their relief mm -hmm. and that's okay. And, and, and if that's all you want from it, you know, great, that's fine because that's where you are. Mm -hmm. Um, but so it's whatever you want it to be. But if you really want to change your posture to such that those pains don't keep coming back, you'll want to do it uh, probably five to seven days a week. Less than that, really, um, if you go more than a couple of days, you know, muscles just don't, they start to atrophy. And so you really need to um, not skip more than, yeah. you know. So it, it, wor it works when you work it. Yeah, you get out of it what you put into it, really. Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah, right. I mean, you know, if you 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 are a member of a gym, but you don't go to it, <laughs> doesn't it doesn't do nothing. It doesn't do. And if you get this, these tools, and you don't do them, they're not going to work. Right, right, yeah. right. Uh, Maria is um, copying the, the uh, and sharing the, um, some of the, like Dr. Axe's uh, article and some of the, Sure. resources you had put on. And Donna says, thank you. This is great. Uh, Tracy Foster says, I was a friend of Deb's first, and then I became a client. These exercises helped me with chronic tailbone pain after multiple injections didn't help. This totally works, but you have to do it regularly. She's Hi, Tracy. Say. <laughs> thank you. She says, I'm doing mine now <laughs> as I was listening. Thanks, Deb. <laughs> Um, uh, and Nancy, uh, somebody else said, uh, Michelle said, never knew this is even existed. Thank you. And Nancy uh -huh. said, is, is it really expensive? Do you ever have specials or discounts? I don't know if you would mm -hmm. address uh, that. Right. I, I, I give a discount for, I currently have a four session package with a 10% discount. Um, the pricing may change um, up or down. I'm, you know, I've changed it already a couple of times since I started. I, I can tell you what I charge per session and given that the first session's three hours and follow-up sessions are typically an hour and a half to two hours. Again, sometimes more. I, I usually like to leave time in case we need it. Um, I charge individual session 175 and four session packages 630. That's my current pricing. Now, if you're listening to this audio later down the road, that could change. But at this moment, February 22nd, 2017, <laughs> that's where okay. I am. Okay. Um, every uh, affiliate, the clinics charge differently. Um, different affiliates like myself get to choose their pricing. So it'll be different everywhere you go. How much time they spend with you, what, what you get at each session, and how much you pay. Um, so, you know, feel free to look around and see what works for you. And a lot of it too is personality. You know, I may not be someone's cup of tea and that's mm -hmm. okay. Um, right. you know, there's great therapists. There's a, um, clinic out in Fort Washington, Pennsylvania. It's like an hour from me, but maybe that's closer to some people who are here and, mm -hmm. and Joan and Fran are great. You know, okay. um, one of my clients, she's going to get certified. She's going to be up and running and she'll be in the South Jersey area at some point. 
Um, and I know she's going to be great. <laughs> so, well, that price sounds very reasonable to me mm -hmm. for what you're offering. Personally, well, I think it's, it's a very fair price. So, Deb, we're going to wrap this up. By, I, you know, I really thank you for taking the time, putting back, putting together this uh, great uh, PowerPoint that was so informative, but also just really to the point, you know, to show us these simple exercises. We're not so simple, <laughs> uh, but I could say that, you know, things that people can implement. Absolutely. And that makes all the difference. So thanks for taking the time and uh, continue with the work that you're doing. We appreciate it. Mm, thank you, Alicia. Thanks, everybody, for joining. Yes. So thank you, everybody, for being here tonight. I'm just going to give you a quick rundown on next month's speaker. Uh, the March webinar will be on March 22nd, and we will ha be having Mark Butler, who is a, a physical therapist, a board-certified orthopedic clinical specialist, and a McKenzie certified specialist for mechanical diagnosis and treatment. He'll be discussing graded motor imagery for the treatment of complex regional pain syndromes uh, and some other chronic pain syndromes. Um, if you have, uh, if you, uh, as you know, your confidence in us is our highest compliment. If you found value in these newsletters, the webinars, and the services, please consider leaving us a positive Google review. Uh, once again, thank you, Deb, and thanks for all who were joining us this evening. Everyone have a good night. Take care. And good night.